is Jalen Rose. I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen Jacoby. What is it that we do? We get the people. Yes. Yes. What they want. We have an absolute collapse in the Los Angeles Lakers. We have the undefeated Cardinals tonight on Thursday Night Football, but we start the show with the Brooklyn Nets. We you always talk about how James Harden doesn't look like himself and they can't stop anybody on the inside, and that was the problem against the Heat. And after the game, the two superstars, current active superstars of the Nets, had this to say about it. It's getting better every single game. Like, as much as I want to get back to just, you know, 30s and 40 points, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Uh, just, I mean, as much as I want to, obviously would love to. Uh, I had no, no, opportunities to play pickup or nothing this summer you know what i mean everything was a rehab mm. for three months he would love uh, to score from, 30 you know a grade two injury that happened three three times in one season so as much as i want to rush the process and be back to you know hooping and killing it's like you now take a time i know what you want me to say <laughs> Yeah, we do miss Kyrie. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, he's part of our team. Wow, there's a lot there, Jalen. So basically, James Harden, who you've pointed out, looks disengaged, lethargic, says, I didn't get a chance to work out this season, summer. I'm working myself back into shape. I want to score 30. I want to score 40, but I can't. What do you think about that? I see the pain and the frustration in his face. And... I, like many, didn't realize that he basically was rehabbing all summer, not playing pickup. It definitely shows in his conditioning. Mm -hmm. It also shows in his lack of explosiveness. And it definitely makes sense to me why he's doing so much walking. As a matter of fact, he's playing at the slowest pace of any player in the entire NBA. Say that again, what? He's playing at the slowest pace of any player in the NBA. I think this is surprising because we all saw him play game seven of the Bucks series. So we assumed he played the last game he was available to play, had the full summer, so he would come back at full strength. That was my assumption going into the season. And, and that should be the assumption. And when players have an off season and then you start a season and they're injured, kind of like Zion, that's not good. Mm -mm. Because as a professional athlete, you got to get used to playing through pain. It's just a part of it. You're only 100% at the beginning of the season. At that point, it's just like a vehicle. You're putting miles on it all season. So That's just how it works. You've always pointed out how James Harden hasn't been playing the way James Harden normally plays. But the other problem that you always point out with this team is their front court and, frankly, their lack of ability to stop anybody from scoring down yep. low. Absolutely. And here's the thing. Kyrie Irving... With James Harden and Kevin Durant, allows you to outscore people because you got three of the greatest scorers in the game. Without him, you can't outscore people. They had 93 points, mm -hmm. right? And look at the game dominated in the paint. And let's talk about who their bigs are playing minutes for them, not named Kevin Durant. Claxton. Yep. LaMarcus Aldridge. Blake Griffin and Millsap. Okay, and, 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 and the thing about those guys, other than Claxton, if this was five to seven years ago, that'd be great. Oh yeah, All-Stars. You know, and, and, and even my guy now, uh, Bruce Brown. He's not also, really a big, you can't I know, call him a big. <laughs> but, but I bring him up because they still require him to play minutes at the four. Mm -hmm. He's actually their current Best roller. He's their best role player. And he's a not uh, R O L E R O L L. Yeah. A, a, absolutely. And so and so like those are their bigs. And how did Miami beat them? Bullied them. Mm -hmm. Points in the paint, offensive rebounds, getting steals, getting blocks, being physical with them, knocking them off their spots, interrupting their cuts, not giving up layups and dunks, and Bam was attacking that rim. Yes. See, like I tell you, when the Nets come to town. Who gonna stop Giannis and Embiid and Bam? That's their problem. That's why I feel like, again, there are many people like you and Stephen A. Smith who think the Nets are gonna win the East. Still do. Without Kyrie Irving. They're not gonna be able to do it. Well, I think Kyrie Irving's gonna get vaccinated and I think James Harden is gonna get healthy. I'm, I'm glad he said this because if he was healthy, this is. One of the weirdest thing I've ever seen happen to an NBA player. Well, here's something I want to point out to you, though. 
I believe and I hope that Kyrie Irving gets vaccinated for the sake of the game. Obviously, it's his choice to choose whether he wants to or not. If he does not play for them this year, those relationships will never be the oh, same. He's playing. He's playing. He's but, got to. I know, but let, but let me let me just let me just take you someplace. If he does not play this year, those relationships with those guys in that locker room will never be the same. You look back at the history of the league, like I was watching the last dance. Shout to uh, all the smoke, Steve, um, Stack Jack and, and Matt, right? And I saw Jermaine O'Neal and the disappointment, the anger that he had in Metal World Peace. You really don't get over when you think that you had a chance to get it done and one of your teammates purposely, choicefully didn't do everything they needed to do to invest themselves like everybody else did. Well, we'll see if Kyrie ends up playing for the Nets, but they're not the only team that is playing under expectations. The other one in the Western Conference, Los Angeles Lakers. They were up by 26 points to the Oklahoma City Thunder, the youngest team in the National Basketball Association. And at the end of the game, here's how it went down. In a bucket. And now we all expect Carmelo Anthony, future Hall of Famer, to hit this shot. And it doesn't hit rim and eventually, the Lakers lose the game after being up by 26. There was a moment at the end of this game that I know you want to talk about that involved Russell Westbrook. And by the way, newsflash, for anybody not paying attention to the lead, the Oklahoma City Thunder are not trying to win basketball. No, no, no. no They're no, no, that's in not the, the business of maximizing the picks they've been able to, uh, to achieve being the best farm system the NBA has seen. The likes of Kevin Durant, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Sabonis have all come through there recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to give a props. A shout to SGA because he balled. He scored yep. 17 points in the third quarter. That was actually the game changer. What happened at the end of the game with Russ, please show that highlight because there are a lot of things I want to point out. Number one, Rondo threw the ball straight to him. Oh, yeah. And so the one thing about playing sports, the way Russ is looking at him, you can also look at your teammate like, dog, what you doing? Well, no, one. no one came to the ball for Rondo to pass to as well. Well, number two, number two, if I'm the young fella, I do what he did not only 10 out of 10 times. Basley? I'm, I'm actually mad at him. I'm mad at him. You're mad at Basley? Yes. I'm going to tell you why I'm mad at you, young fella. You got bounced. And that was your 16th 20-point game. You're supposed to freak that and put an exclamation point on it. You see Miles Bridges out here getting in the highlight? I need that from you, young fella. That might be the biggest win of the year. Don't, don't worry about their feelings. Like, each time the team that loses, we always talk about the unwritten rules. And you know there isn't a human being that loves Russ more than me in mm -hmm. the media. Okay, but he also has something else in yesterday's game. It's called a triple hobble. Triple hobble? H-O-B-B-L-E. Okay. Shout out to NBA TV, too. That reminded me of it. It's a triple double with 10 turnovers. Mm. And so I actually did some research on this. What? You did research? And Russell Westbrook, who I never felt or thought anybody would pass the big on triple doubles, he has six times where he's had triple doubles and had 10 turnovers. The next person has three. That's James Harden. I think it's one more person with two, and everybody else that has ever played basketball doesn't have over one. Never done. That that's that that's who Russ is. One speed, one mentality. The reason why we like a guy during the 82-game schedule. This is why the Lakers brought but him this in. This is the full Russell Westbrook experience. Correct. He, he led the team to a victory against San Antonio, Correct. and he led the team to a collapse against the worst team in basketball. Maybe the Orlando Magic are the worst team, but like this team is not trying to win games. They're trying to develop Giddy. They're trying to develop SGA. They're just trying to develop young players and get a good draft pick. But also, Lou Dort. Went past, went past Carmelo Anthony, got an uncontested dunk late. It came out of a timeout. Monk shot a low percentage shot. And then the guy threw the ball right to Melo like Freddie Brown in the championship game against Georgetown. 
And Carmelo shot an air ball? Air ball. Gotta hit the rim. Gotta hit the rim. Jalen, we have a huge football game tonight. This